Hey, how's it going? This is GDibsy here with another sound software tutorial, and in this one I'm going to be going over the basics of FL Studio 10, the very basics. So if you're an advanced FL Studio to, uh, user, you might not find this very helpful. This is going to be covering the very basics, like the first things you might notice when you open this up. And honestly, the first thing I thought when I opened up FL Studio for the first time is that it looked pretty confusing. There was a lot of stuff going on, and I didn't really know what did what. But um, I was usually I was faced with this starter template with the patterns the kick, the clap, the hi-hat, and the snare. So these are automatically linked to mixer tracks, and I'll explain that later, but that's a very important link that you should use in all of your tracks. So um, so here we go. This is actually a template, so if you want a new, uh, a new uh, kind of, just a new project, you can open one of these up, and this is the basic with limiter. And um, the first thing that I want to talk about is just the menus and the buttons up here. So file is pretty self-explanatory this is where you want to um, create new projects open new projects save your projects export and import and exporting is really important because um, the highest quality of ex highest quality sound you can export is a WAV file and then mp3 files you can decide um, if you want to export it you know you can decide how high the quality is you get the bit rate and uh, normally people export at 320 or 256 and um, you can kind of des decide a few different things about your track, but getting back to the actual basics, um, so file is important and you can open uh, tracks like that. Um, edit, I don't usually use very much, I just learned the hotkeys like cut and copy and paste, those are very simple, you can use your control key. Um, channels, this is really important, so if you want to access your um, plugins, which are, I'll look, I, have, I actually have videos explaining um, packs, plugins, and effects, but those are those are just explaining the three types of, um, or the Plug plugins and packs. Sorry, sorry. Pl plugins and packs are, um, or plugins and samples, I should say, are very important because most people just use samples and plugins, and then they use effects to modify them and to mix and master everything. So when you go to channels and you want to add a plugin, you can look through all of your plugins here and say, I want to add FL keys. This is a really basic one that comes with FL Studio. It's a native plugin. Um, it's very basic, and it sounds almost too basic. It doesn't seem to sound that realistic. But each plugin is different. I'm not going to go over plugins because that's a whole nother, um, it's, a, it's just a whole another aspect of FL Studio or any digital audio workstation. Um, plugins are their own thing and they're usually third party VSTs or that which which basically means that um, they're, they're made by another company but you can use them in the sound software and that's what they're designed for. Um, so whenever you want to add in a plugin, you'll just go to channels or add one, and then you can do that. There's other shortcuts ways to do this, but I, don't, I never use them. This is the simplest way. And if you add a new plugin into FL Studio, which I also I, I'll link a, a video in the um, or annotations on the screen and videos in the description, just explaining more in depth how to do these things. Um, once you add them, you to in order to recognize them, you go to more and refresh this and do a fast scan and then find them in here. Um, um, so to get them in there, just watch that video that will be on the screen right now. Um, otherwise, just keep watching this for more basics. So that's channels. It's very simple, adding in your plugins. Um, view, I almost never use this. This is more of a, well, plugin picker. This is what I was talking about. This is something where you can look at all the plugins on FL Studio and kind of choose them in this kind of visualization. Never really use it, but it's kind of cool. Um, options, this is really important, extremely important. MIDI settings are... Um, Vital if you're going to use any kind of MIDI controller or external um, external MIDI controller. I personally have a Axiom 49, which is really awesome. It's not um, it's not plugged in right now, but if it was plugged in, then I would rescan for MIDI devices, and then I would check here the controller type. Now you kind of have to check because there's no option for Axiom 49 on here, but what I use is Tascam US428. If you don't have a if you don't have a um, MIDI controller, then you don't even have to worry about this, but this is something that's really important. Now, audio, this is probably more important. If you're going to use um, the ASIO for all drivers, which are what I use most of the time, then you uh, you can only use one audio device at a time, or record with one at a time, which is kind of annoying if you're trying to record your voice. Now, what I could have done is recorded my voice for this tutorial in a plug-in, or not a plug-in, in a separate thing. Uh, but I didn't want to go through that hassle. I just recorded it through Bandicam here, and um, because of that, I can't to use my ASIO driver since I can only use them alone. So I just use my primary sound driver, which is what you would use if you don't have those uh, drivers installed, or if you don't have a sound card. I recommend getting a sound card, by the way. That's really important for making music. Um, but the buffer length is what you would want to worry about if you aren't using a sound card. 
or even if you were and you just were using your primary sound drivers or something that you can mess with this. The lower you go with the buffer length, it means the lag is lessened. So if you were using, say, a MIDI controller, then this would be the, the lag between you pressing a button and it actually registering that button. So the lower you go, the higher of a chance and the more uh, demanding it is on your PC, But um, or as far as like the lower latency, but the higher you go, it's going to be easier on your PC, but it's going to be obviously more laggy and not as high quality, I think. So um, that's that's not really. This, this is important though if you're trying to trying to reduce the latency or um, increase the quality of the sound, I guess. Um, general, these are just other settings that you can look through yourself, um, and this is important if you're going to ex look for extra folders, you can search them up here, and this will allow this will allow you to get samples over here. Right now I just have it through image line and data and what I did is I have shortcuts on my desktop that allow me to drag and drop stuff into this folder but here's the pathway if you want to look it up through your uh, through your menu. So that's that and um, looking at the project this is how much time you spent on the project when you started it etc. This is really good for keeping track of how long you spent on it or you can reset it. So yeah that's that. Options is really important. Tools is also very important. Um, I'm not going to go into advanced functions in FL Studio but a very useful thing is using this last tweak to do things. So that's pretty cool. And then help. I don't ever use that. But um, so that's that. That, that. that was already you know six and a half minutes of just explaining the basic um, basic menu up here. So besides that, here you have a few um, MIDI MIDI little, little little control buttons, and these are only important if you're using a MIDI controller and you're looking at handled and unhandled buttons that are you can program to do certain things. Um, over here is the master volume. This is how loud the track will be overall but you don't want to go above 100% or else you're going to have bad clipping most of the time and you don't usually want to reduce this or else it's not going to be as loud as you can get and mastering and mixing mainly mastering is, is all about getting the highest quality sound and as loud as you can possibly get without any clipping and clipping is something that I've always strived once I learned about it and what it was I always strive to avoid clipping is when you have your sounds too loud and you can see over here in the monitor um, that it's too loud so say I add a kick just dive, I'm going off topic right now, but it's kind of important. So you can see right now over here that it's not red and it's not way too loud. But if I turn this up and if I took off the limiter from here, okay, it's not even that loud. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so that's what it took, but you can see over here that it's way too loud, and that's what that's what that's what's called clipping, and it doesn't sound good at all. So keeping this at 100% or even less, I usually keep it at 100% is the best thing to do. And if you want your stuff to be super loud, then um, you got to learn how to mix, mix and master, and that takes a lot of time and practice. So there's that. And as you can see, there's a pattern in song mode. Song mode is obviously if you want to play the full song. Now this is another really important thing. It's related to this. Coming over here. This is how to view the playlist. This is what you would, where you would drag your patterns that you created. Now the pattern that I just created was just four notes. So you can put it here. And if you're on this little paint thing, you can make these, you can hold it down and then it selects all of them. You can move, it's pretty, pretty convenient. If you choose the draw tool, then drawing one won't allow you to draw multiple ones, but you can drag it and drop it wherever you want. And then right clicking will just allow you to erase these. So this is the, the, song, the song mode. Pattern mode is what you would always use just when you're creating your patterns. And this is also very important. The beats per bar for this pattern is exactly what it says. It's the beats per bar. So if you want a pattern that's 16 bars long, which is what I usually make my patterns, um, especially for drums, then you would do that. So continuing on with this thing, master pitch, I never really got into that, but that you should not usually tweak that. That's the actual master pitch of the, vault, of the whole entire track. So you don't want to usually change that. Um, and then play, pause, and record. This is recording is very useful with MIDI controllers as well. Tempo, I think the default for a lot of the, for most of, for FL Studio, this version at least 10 is 130, but you can change this, of course. And then um, uh, this is the actual pattern that you're on, and you can use this to get to your patterns. What I usually do if I'm making a new pattern is just go to just go to this thing, drop down a little arrow, find first empty, or you can do Shift F4. And that's another way to do it quickly. That's, it's also really useful to learn those hotkeys because you just save time, It'll improve your workflow. So um, yeah, this is the monitor, and you can change how it looks. Actually, so there's a few different ways of uh, of looking at this thing here, but it doesn't really matter that much how you do it. It's kind of just personal preference. This is just how much your CPU is using, and um, this is uh, 
this step thing is if you it's it's usually most of these are for if you're using your um, external MIDI controllers but this is it this is how um, what what it's gonna snap to what the notes are gonna snap to if you're recording with your MIDI controller say so if I'm using a keyboard to uh, to play some notes on FL keys and I ended up uh, making a few chords then this is what it would step to which means in the piano roll every half step would be it would, it would slide to each half step. So if, if I was off with my timing a little bit, which is pretty likely, you, you might be off a little bit with your timing on MIDI controllers, then it would just snap to the half step. And in here, if you want to work on, if you want to like create some chords here, um, this is currently snapping to, you can check what it's snapping to over here with this drop down thing, snap. Snapping to a fourth step. So if I want this to be the same as that one, a half step, and this is what a half step is right here. It's that little interval that's snapping to. So, so um, some useful things in the piano roll, which is what this whole thing is called. And the way to get to the piano roll is right clicking this and going piano roll. FL Studio has a really nice piano roll. It's very simple and very easy to see. Um, so some useful things about the piano roll, um, selecting everything, control A and then control C and then control V to paste. So those three things in a row are just very useful if you're trying to get things out quickly. Keep in mind that when you, when you do hit control A, you're selecting all of it and this red bar will only play what you have selected, which can be kind of annoying. So that's that. Um, with this piano roll, yeah, I would just say those hot, those simple hotkeys are the most important things when you're doing this. And um, there's there's a lot of tools you can use through here, but they're, none of them are super important, and I'm just going over the very basics right now. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Paint is the same as before. Delete is pretty obvious. Just right-clicking will get rid of it. And then also another important thing is when you click on it, when you... Uh, when you double click on one of these notes you can change aspects of it, like the velocity but keep in mind that down here it'll tell you how what the velocity is for each of these and you can actually modify the velocity for the whole chord but if I was to click on this and change the velocity and then without clicking on anything else step another put another note in there it would mimic that velocity of that note so this is going to be way down it's way lower Cl clicked on that one now clicking over here will mimic that velocity it'll double it but if I instead clicked on this one Maybe right there. So keep that in mind when you're uh, playing with any you notes. Know, sometimes trying to get a more realistic sound will only be acquired by you know you'll only be able to do that if you change the velocity or, or just record it on your MIDI controller. So that's that. Selecting is pretty important if you just want to select certain notes and move them maybe. So that's that. And zooming, I don't usually do this, but you can do that I guess if you want. Um, most of the time, I just play with this bar up here, or if you want to get a bigger view or a smaller view you can play with this over here too so yeah that's the piano roll not much else that you uh, really need to um, worry about as far as the basics of the piano roll um, there is more to it but that's those are the basics for sure um, let's see what else I can talk about here so um, metronome is important if you're trying to get timing down and you can see on the first note there was clipping now, to, now, I'm going to introduce another thing that's extremely important in FL Studio. This is one of the big basics. Um, so the first thing I'm, th first things I've talked about so far, just to recap, are this menu, some of the buttons up here, what they look like. Oh, this also, by the way, really quickly, can be um, can be changed however you want. I like to have it on the actual time. Um, so yeah, I've just only talked about a few basic things. Now, um, the mixer is, you can get to the mixer by hitting this button here. This allows you to get to the mixer. The mixer is important. The master um, master mixer is everything goes through this. It's very simple. Um, putting a limiter on the master mixer, sorry, max master mixer, <laughs> it's like a tongue twister. Is um, very important if you want to control the volume and make sure it doesn't go way too loud. Just putting that mix, just putting that on, allowed me to get this to be louder without any clipping going on. You can look up here. There's no clipping. And there's ways to get it even louder. Um, but the most important thing about the mixer, and I talk about effects in another t tutorial, which I will put on the screen right now, and it's, it'll be in the description, but the mixer allows you to, to link things um, and allows you to sidechain, which is a tool used in a lot of electronic music, and it allows you to add effects to each individual mixer track that you link. 
So the templates actually already are pre-linked. So if you add, if you dragged in a sample from this bar over here, which is a whole other thing that I'm get, I guess I'm getting into right now. If you have if you have your samples over here, and you have say a kick, and you drag it over here, it's not linked to anything in the mixer track. So in order to link it, you can either move it with this, or you can have this selected, and you can right click on one of these and say link selected channels to the track. Or what I like to do is just go over here and say assign free mixer track so it'll pick the next one that hasn't been linked which is really useful for keeping organized so um, then the best thing to do over here you can control its volume you can control its um, stereo separation which is just the, the balance between right and left and then over here is the important part where you can add your own effects to it. A fruity limiter is one of the basics that I go over in my effects tutorial and then um, you know you can add reverb and you can EQ it so copy and paste and then cut this so you can see what it looks like with this fruity parametric EQ and you can modify how that sounds if you want a lower end so that sounds a lot different now but you can obviously play with it so that's just one little thing and um, the limiter um, pre you can use presets within plugins or effects and that's a whole other thing but presets will save you time and Sometimes you can modify them a little bit. I'm not. I'm obviously not going in very in depth into presets, and this tutorial is actually going to be over pretty soon because I've already covered a lot of the stuff. But um, yeah, so linking things to uh, to the mixer is very important. Being able to use your mixer with the samples that you put in here, and even the plugins, like the plugins here. If I wanted to assign a free mixer track to the key, to the FL keys, put it in here. You know, I might want a limiter again, and maybe add some reverb to make this sound a little bit more realistic. So here's another here's one of the my favorite effects, very simple. This pattern is so simple, but um <laughs> all I'm trying to do here is just demonstrate a few things. Okay. So like I, I'll just talk a little bit more about this whole thing over here. This is very important. This whole entire um, browser slash plugin picker is accessed, accessed through this thing right here. And um, I always have it open. You can obviously change how big it is. Um, but this allows you to access a whole ton of stuff. So if you want to get into your channel presets, which are for your plugins, like one of the very basic ones is 3XOXC, OSC that comes with FL Studio. Um, if you want to access presets for this, you can go to Channel Presets, 3XOSC, boom, you have a ton of them that I, some of these I added into FL Studio and some that I saved myself. So maybe if I want this Cray synth, uh, <laughs> there's that. Assigned to free mixer tracks, so you can do more stuff with it. You know, put, some, put a little bit of reverb on that. Of course, put a limiter on that. Maybe put like some kind of compression on that. Um, how about a um, Maximus there? So now it sounds a lot better. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in FL Studio, and your you kind of your limit is just your how much you know about FL Studio, and really how much you practice. It's, there's no um, the, the people who rip on FL Studio they kind of uh, they kind of frustrate me a little bit because people who think that FL Studio is just this really easy to use basic software that's kind of a misguided um, little little thought there because it's really as good as the producer it's as good as you are and I've been getting better and um, I always always strive to learn new things so that's the best attitude when you when you encounter any sound software so yeah this is uh, this is really simple packs is another one I use the most which is where I drag all my samples and um, I'll link another one of my videos I've made three FL Studio tutorials or three like actual sound software FL Studio tutorials so far and those are very useful to watch after this video so that's that and then the rest of this um, these are pretty self-explanatory I don't usually use these ones very much but uh, viewing the playlist is important because this is where you would drag all the patterns that you made in whatever order you wanted and um, then uh, viewing the step sequencer, this is just this whole pattern layout thing, I guess. And um, and then this one is the piano roll, which I usually just access by right-clicking. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that, and that's that's that. Have a good one.